Welcome everybody, it's Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by again, everyone. Let's have some fun. We're gonna do a beautiful uh, seascapes painting here. We're gonna do a little small uh, shack along the shore, a boat. We're gonna, this is the finished painting. Let's take a look. So we're gonna go over all the details here of how we're gonna to get to this finished product of this gorgeous seascape painting. Uh, we got a house again. Uh, we got some a boat over here, some small figures we're going to put in there, some gorgeous vertical lines with the telephone poles and the trees and the brush and the gorgeous grasses and weeds along the foreground here. We have all the details, all the brushes you'll need, colors, the techniques, the methods, everything right here. Stick with our channel, have some uh, fun, join along, and uh, you'll see it's a really easy process if you just Take your time and follow along with us. We go each step of the way and we explain how we create each part of the painting as we go. So we'll go over the pencil drawing first. After the pencil drawing, then we'll start to get into the light glazing washes. This is a glazing technique, so we're doing the light glazings first. And then over the top of the light glazings, we're doing the darker darks. And you'll see how we do this all. You can do this. This is a fun painting at home. Give it a try. Um, and you just try this painting three, four different times, and each time you do it, you'll learn something new as you go. And um, we'll be right back. Okay, we're getting back started again here. We're going to do our sketch first, our preliminary sketch, and then our final contour drawing on this um, gorgeous uh, shore scene. We have a nice little shore house, some ocean some distant hills, we have some foreground with some grasses, we'll use some different brushes here, we'll talk about the uh, brushes and the colors and everything as we go. So this is pretty much a uh, um, kind of like paint along uh, as we go, so you'll come along with me here on this journey for this painting. We'll just kind of you take some mental notes if you want, you scratch down some notes on some paper if you want to, uh, you know, uh, if you need to, if you think, you, but really you could just work along with the video. You can even hit pause as you go and work, you know, each step of the way. I take a lot of breaks. So as you know, if you follow me for some time, you know, I'll, I'm always taking breaks, usually, you know, two or three at least per video. Um, so you're kind of used to that. If you're kind of new here and welcome, if you're brand new at my channel, you're just coming by for the first time, welcome. Uh, again, we're just, we're doing watercolors, everything watercolor. We're doing seascapes, landscapes, we do some figure painting, we do some still life, we do boat paintings, we do everything watercolor here. So as long as you're tuning in each week, and I always encourage everybody to subscribe, there's that red button right down there on the right hand side. If you subscribe, then each time we make a new video, you'll be alerted and you can kind of watch along. If you're watching each video, you're gonna be learning the techniques over and over and over again. It's gonna get really solid in your mind so that whenever you're painting, you're just going to automatically uh, follow the ingrained pattern you're learning over, uh, over and over each week. So the more you watch the videos, the more you're going to actually learn um, the techniques and the methods that I use. If you want to create paintings uh, of this style and this look that I do, everyone's different. You might find my channel is something different than you like, and that's fine too. But if you're kind of looking for something where you're happy with what you're seeing as far as the results I'm getting, then then fine. You just if you're just watching my videos week after week full through, you'll just you'll kind of just learn all the kind of things I do, the techniques, the methods, the little tips and tricks and tidbits that I do. And I always mention that too. I always mention the little subtle details that I'm I'm working on as I go. So you learn those too and you can jot those down if you want. Or again, if you're always watching, you don't need to take notes. You'll just kind of remember them as you go. So no worries. All right, let's get into the sketch now. So I made some preliminary hash marks on my tape. So I'll put them here. So I'm just going to go around my painting and sort of put my hash marks where I had, you know, key areas that I wanted to um, make sure that I kind of landed on when I was doing my drawing. So you can see those. I made those black hash marks and we'll kind of talk about that. And um, I think we're going to... 
This is a partly cloudy day with some stormy clouds, so the sunlight's not exactly, you know, uh, all you know, perfectly set out on the uh, painting. But let's just say, for for the most part, the sunlight's coming from this side this way. So we'll put our light insignia up here. So that's our light insignia we use to kind of show where the light's coming from this way. If you ever have a doubt, it's always good to put this light insignia on your paintings. You hear me say this a lot. If you put that light insignia in your painting, then if ever you're in the middle of doing something and you lose concentration or you lose your, you, you, you forget, oh my gosh, where's, where's my sunlight coming from? No problem. You just quick look up here and you say, oh yeah, it's coming from there. That means I got to make my shadow going th this way. So you're always, always refer back to your uh, light source in your paintings and if there's no light in the painting let's say it's a cloudy day and you don't have any uh, light like bright sunlight well then you don't have to worry so much uh, but if you do have a bright sunlight sunlit painting where you want that bright light look lots of sunshine through your painting then you it's best to put your uh, light insignia whether it's the lights coming from the right from the left maybe it's straight up midday Maybe if it's sunset, it's over here, far over here on the right or the left, shining along the side of the painting. That would make your shadows real long. You know, if you're up high with the sunlight in the middle of the day, your shadows will be very small, so you won't see too many long shadows. You'll see very uh, diminutive, you know, diminutive uh, shadows, they say, or sm small, um, sh smaller shadows. And, uh, okay, so we have our hash marks. Now we'll We'll get our uh, drawing going here. So I thought the first thing was the main exciting part is the, the house here. We have a nice little shore house here. So I'm just going to kind of sketch it in the way I think we're going to want it to be. And that looks pretty good. I wonder if I can... Yeah, I think that might be a little easier to see that. Okay, so that'll be our roof area of our house. A little shore house here along the shoreline. Maybe that we have a boat over here. Well, maybe we'll draw in a little boat. Maybe we have a little boat. We can dock here by our house and we can cruise out on our boat. Have a little story. Have some fun stories as you go. When you're an artist and you're painting, does this make sense? Have a little story in your mind. Maybe you get excited. You think, ooh, yeah, it'd be nice to uh, you know, in my mind, think that I'm, you know, I'm in a house here along the ocean side, and I have a little boat. And I'm gonna take a little cruise with my boat out into the water. You know, fish a little bit maybe, or maybe just cruise around, or, or maybe not. Maybe you have a little dock along the side of the house, and you're gonna go out and maybe do some uh, fishing or crabbing. Maybe have some crab nets you're gonna throw out, make some fresh crabs for dinner. Maybe there's a lobster pot you can put out along a dock or something along the shore area. So have some fun, make some stories up in your mind just to get those uh, creative juices flowing. Make sure, you know, makes it for a more exciting painting if you kind of get yourself involved in a little bit of a story. Kind of like if you're a book writer. Let's say you're writing books. Uh, you know, you get into the story, and as let's say if you're writing books, you're going to get in there and you're going to get into the story, and you're going to actually probably try to be one of the characters in the story, possibly, or a couple characters. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're like, you know, really enthralled in the whole story, and you just you get lost in it and the next thing you know you're kind of like in another world and having a fun time and that's a good thing you know so if you can do that I've always kind of said that over the years that I've been on YouTube here is you know having that little bit of a story creating a little bit of a fun time as you paint some people you might not like that idea and that's fine too not everyone's gonna you know be interested in kind of having a story in their mind as they're painting you know maybe you come from a different approach and you could do it something different maybe you're um, Maybe you're an architect or an engineer and you're looking at as you're designing a, a house for somebody or a shore house for somebody and you're going to create the shore house and now you're painting it first just to get some ideas before you design it for the person that might be hiring you to do your um, your, your design for, for, your, um, for your home that you're going to design for somebody, let's say. So you're maybe going to create some sketches first and some paintings first. A lot of architects and engineers probably take up art and they do painting and drawings and sketches so that they can show them to the people, their clients, and or maybe they do it on computer, computer type stuff, CAD, you know, stuff like that. So here, I'm going off the track a little bit, but I, I want everyone to have, you know, have, a fu have fun with this, have a little story. Um, you know, you can come at it with different approaches. I'm kind of, you know, I'm looking at it as I'm sort of like a writer and I'm creating a story with my artwork here, okay? We're at the cool, we're at the shore. 
Ooh, we can feel the cool breeze of the shore and a sunny day. And we're having fun and we're out here and we have a little house and we have a boat over here maybe somewhere we're going to put a boat. And we'll make the shoreline over here. So I'll just take some lines this way. Uh, I meant to go over here on this line, but it's oh, that, there's another line there. That's the ocean maybe, the distant shoreline there. And this is the fore, foreground. The, so you have a bay over here, maybe a bay, and then maybe some hills over here, some distant hills, and maybe it's that might be where the inlet is, where the ocean is, comes in. So you have a little bit of a, it's always nice to leave a little spot where it's just water and no hills. So you can kind of feel like you can go out into the, larger ocean and beyond and then over here maybe uh, there's some more it's always good to keep in mind let's sometimes I use my t-square here I use my t-square and I just rest it on my pad and what I do is I kinda just I can bring some lines straight through things so I don't want to draw a line straight through my uh, house here so I'm gonna take this and I want to have my foreground the same height so I just rest my square along that line and I hold it against the uh, gummed pad I have here this is Arches rough paper it's got the orange cover on it and so I just know that's about and then this here is about about here so I'm just trying to line up my shoreline so that's the distant shoreline over here like that this is the foreground closest to us. This is the distant shoreline and this is the water here. So we have a little uh, area of water like the bay and the ocean here. And uh, that's pretty good. So we have we have the window here. We have the bottom of the the eaves of this. Uh, so we'll put a we'll put some uh, wood trim on our uh, rooftop area and I'll just maybe you can, you can kind of erase a few lines if you have to we'll get that in there though they have some trim there and uh, we're gonna have a little chimney here okay we have a chimney on the top of the rooftop here and uh, maybe a Maybe an antenna for some. For some TV. And uh, we're looking pretty good here. We got our house in. We have our window. We can make some panes on the window here. Maybe let's go with. Um, maybe we'll go with some. That looks pretty good. Maybe we'll do a pattern like that. You can change around your patterns on your uh, girls of your window if you want. And that looks pretty good. And here we might have another little bit of grass maybe over here. And then over here it's more shore and dirt and sand. We can make up our story as we go. And as we paint we can add things in or so forth. Now, um, so we have our house in, we have our distant shoreline in. That's pretty good so far. Uh, maybe it's a good time to take a break. When you're drawing, let's say, uh, drawing can be very, uh, you know, you have to use a lot of concentration. So we're, does that make sense? We're using lots of concentration when we're drawing, laying things out. So let's not keep working and working and working and next thing you know we're drawing lines and places and we're kind of getting confused. Let's just, uh, I do it myself, I always try to take breaks when I'm doing my you know, pencil drawings. So usually I'll do maybe two, two sessions of pencil drawing. So maybe the first 15 minutes like we did here, we did our first uh, part of our drawing. Let's take a quick break, we'll come back, we'll finish up our pencil drawing and then from there we'll start painting. So thanks again for coming by and joining along with us. Let's have some more fun. Let's get into the story. We're here, we're at the shore, or it's a beautiful day. It's, ooh, we've got some storm clouds, that's okay too. We're going to do some stormy clouds here with this painting. Makes it more exciting and um, we'll have fun. We'll be right back. 
Okay, we're back from our break, everybody. I hope you're taking breaks. Are you taking breaks? Uh, along with me too as well. I think it's a good thing. Try to take some breaks here and there, but I know some of you, you like to just keep, uh, you know, uh, motoring through everything, and that's fine too. Not everybody works the same way. I find breaks are really helpful for me, but I realize not all of you are gonna wanna take breaks. You're just gonna wanna keep working right through everything, and that's fine too. We all have different personalities. We all have different ways of doing things, and that's fine. You're the artist. You find what ways best for you. I'm only offering my ideas on how I do things. So you can take my ideas and then spin off and do different, you know, things from what I do that make you happier and, you know, things that make more sense for you. But I'm just doing what makes sense for me, sharing that. And then, you know, you can, again, to, you know, take some ideas off of what I do and, you know, work with the way you like to uh, um, work in your process of your painting and your, your creating of your artwork. So that's all. I just want to make sure you have the freedom. You're the artist. I want you to have the freedom to do things your way. That's what art's all about. You know, you can do this painting a lot different than I'm doing it, but you might use maybe some of the same techniques I have, but you might use some different techniques than I'm using. And also you might want to, or you might change around the design that I'm doing. You might take this building and move it over here on the left side and maybe do something a little different. So it's all up to you how you do it. But it's again, that's what it is about being an artist. You have the freedom to do things the way you like to do it. And and uh, it's your artwork. It's, you know, your own personal artwork. And again, I mentioned storyline. Let's have a story with us here as we're doing this. Pretend you're here actually at this location and you're trying to just, you know, get into the mood of everything. Storm clouds, we're gonna put in some stormy clouds up here, some sunlight too mixed in with it. Uh, some shadows, some light, some water, some trees. Uh, we're gonna have a feeling of wind in here too. Maybe we're gonna take some of our trees and make the branches kind of flowing to the, let's say the right. We'll pretend the wind's going this way and the light's going this way. And uh, we'll have fun with this. Let's keep going. Okay, so now the next thing I did was I wanted to put maybe a like a telephone uh, pole here. So maybe I, I take my ruler. You can use a ruler if you want. I sometimes use a ruler when I'm doing stuff like this. So I just take a light line like that and I make my telephone pole. And now we'll make this one. Let's go straight through all the way up, through the picture, all the way up to the top of the picture frame, like that. And um, I might erase that part of that there. And then over here we'll make another pole, telephone pole. Let's do this one over here about this height. This one we're going to make thinner, so I'll take the line and I'll make a thinner pole here. Because remember, as we go in the distance, things get thinner. So if you have trees going into the distance away from you, so here this one's really close, this telephone pole. As this next telephone pole is set into the picture as we're drawing it in, it's going to be thinner because it's going away. So it's, you know, in, in the distance, it's, it's getting smaller, thinner, like that. That's all we just remember. Things get smaller as they go into the distance and cooler. So, you know, your colors are going to be more uh, grayed down and cooler, let's say, in the distance. And the foreground here, the colors are more bright, more exciting. And then as we, uh, as we go into the distance, the colors get a little more misty looking, cooler looking, more grayer, grayer colors. You don't have to add as much straight color. You can gray the colors down a little bit. We'll explain that as we go. So here we're still drawing, so we're going to have our telephone pole over here. So let's do that one like that. This one here is larger. Maybe we'll just make a, a couple lines like this. So that will be out in the distance. Maybe we'll have another telephone pole over here. And this one here is very, very thin. There's no, we're not making any double line for this telephone pole. This one is just a single line and we'll put a little cross on the top and that's the where the cables attached to is at the top of the, the top of the um, crossbar, cross member on top of the telephone pole. And this one here we might have the, the lines going out this way like that. So maybe there's a pole, telephone pole out here somewhere off the picture that makes it look a little interesting. And then maybe another hole down here very barely visible like that and then maybe we have another maybe we'll put another house over here somewhere so that'll be a small house over here a little shack over here 
And that looks pretty interesting. Okay, so we got a lot of interesting stuff going here. Let's do our tree right here. This one we'll do freehand. Um, we're just going to take our pencil and just start firing in a beautiful tree. Make it kind of, the lines, make the lines a little bumpy, right? Trees are kind of bumpy looking. They're not straight lines. And then we make some branches out here. We'll do most of this with the brush. So remember, we're going to use our uh, needlepoint brush. So when we're doing our trees, we always love to use our uh, needlepoint brushes here. So we'll use that when we're painting our, our trees in, our limbs and branches. And we'll have beautiful results with our needlepoint brush. And we'll have another tree over here, a little smaller. This one might be a little uh, smaller uh, tree here. So we don't want to make all the trees the same size. We want to change. We always want to change the look of our painting. So we try to make maybe a large tree, a small tree, a large telephone pole, a small telephone pole, a small bit of shoreline in distant mountains, a larger section of uh, distant mountains and shoreline and water. So if we can keep ch changing things and making things sort of uh, non-symmetrical, that's a really cool idea. And that's what I'm using here is that sort of non-symmetrical look. We're not really going for the everything evenly spaced. We're going with adding things in, uh, you know, in a um, non-symmetrical fashion. Um, we have the, the house here is, you know, maybe about halfway. And then the top here, top half is that might be symmetrical actually. We've got about halfway from here to the bottom of the painting. So maybe some symmetrical ideas work too. Maybe just not as many. You'd want to have more non-symmetrical ideas in your painting. And if you have a few symmetrical, like maybe a half and half, that's not too bad. This one looks like half, half maybe. That's yeah, about halfway. So there are some areas here that are symmetrical, but for the most part this layout, this design is more or less, I'm trying to break everything up, small, large, small, large, in that kind of a fashion. So we have our telephone poles drawn in, our distant mountains, our foreground, we have the ideas of just starting out our trees here. So we have a smaller tree over here. We're going to do most of that with our needlepoint brush, so we're not worrying about drawing in the pencil line so much. And you see how I kind of just lightly penciled these in. And we'll get the rest with our brush when we're painting. And then over here, we have everything all set now. So good, we're ready to paint. We have our... Antenna, TV antenna here. We have chimney here. We have our distant shack over here. I think we're good now. All right, again, I'm going to say it. Let's take a break. <laughs> Let's take a break, everybody, okay? <clears throat> we'll come back in five minutes or so, ten minutes, and um, we'll start painting. But this is really the main thing. Once you get your pencil drawing in, it's fun from there because you're just going to be really getting the painting uh, going. Lots of beautiful watercolor washes. We're going to show you how to do a wet and wet technique. We're going to use the wet and wet glazing technique here. We'll use the glazing technique. We're going to do a wash over the whole painting and then come back, let that dry 100% and then come back and do our darker darks. So this is again um, a painting where you're going to be taking some breaks here and there and uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes. Uh, let's just, I'm going to take a quick break, get a cup of coffee uh, downstairs with my coffee machine and I'll be right back. All right, we're back from our break, everybody. Let's get back into it here. So now we're ready to paint. So before we're gonna paint, let's just kind of take some notes here. Uh, I want everybody to kind of remember that you can always, um, if you're ever having maybe an idea of like, I wonder what br brush Chris is using, or I wonder what uh, paints Chris is using, what colors, uh, I wonder what palettes Chris is using, or what brushes. Always remember, all you have to do is uh, type in to YouTube search, you just type in my name, Chris, space, Petri, and then type in the word uh, in YouTube, a YouTube search, right? You just type my name, Chris, Petri, and then you type in whatever, what uh, the idea you want to type, uh, uh, what brushes, brushes. So you just type in Chris Petri, brushes. 
and then you'll probably see five or six videos I've made recently and some going back a little ways, maybe a year ago, where I cover all the brushes I use, what the exact names are, the brands, the sizes, things like that. Or you might say, oh, I wonder what colors Chris is using. Well, you can just type in Chris Petri and then type in uh, colors or palettes. Chris Petri palettes. So all you have to do is Chris Petri brushes or you type in Chris Petri palettes or Chris Petri colors. You could put in any if you if you're interested in painting a lot of boats let's say you, you type in Chris Petri boats and then you'll see I maybe have like uh, 10 or 20 boat paintings so anytime you just if you want to refer back to maybe some of my other videos that I have I have hundreds of videos in my archives and YouTube the only thing I say is my older some of my older work on YouTube that I didn't have is my, my equipment wasn't that great I started out with an iPhone actually to do my first few videos for the first year and then after that I kind of upgraded from there but I always tried to upgrade my equipment as I went so over the last you know maybe six or seven years on YouTube I've upgraded my equipment numerous times so now I'm using a really high quality camera a really good uh, microphone good lighting I bought some expensive you know pretty expensive lighting to um for my video so my videos look a lot better they sound better now some of my older videos they're not so great as far as quality goes but but they are pretty good they're, they're definitely if you're really interested in the information they're really good but if you're really like finicky about uh like the camera and the way it looks and maybe the the sound then maybe it's not the greatest thing but again you can always use it as a resource though but i do have a lot of i've been using really good equipment for the last couple years so you will if you're going back a couple years in time i still have lots of videos on each of these subjects I've done a lot of videos on all of these subjects over the last couple of years with my good equipment. So you're going to see good quality videos uh, for these topics. So for here, if you just type in brushes, Chris Petri brushes, you'll see the brushes I use. Um, and again, if you subscribe down below, you'll see that red button. Subscribe, please subscribe. Hey, you're not, I don't want you to miss out on all the fun stuff we're doing here. So remember, if you hit subscribe, you're going to automatically be alerted when the new videos come out each week as we're working week after week, month after month, and year after year, you're going you're gonna to have the new videos coming to you and you'll be alerted so you don't f forget about us here. And uh, that'll be great. So you'll join along with us and you'll keep learning and growing as a watercolor artist and your paintings are going to get better and better, I guarantee it. So just a little bit of more information on my videos that I have going back a little ways. So here we're going to use a couple new brushes. Maybe we don't use these all the time. You'll see these. If you're new here, maybe you're just new, first time coming here. Thank you for coming by. Uh, we have some brushes. Uh, we'll use some flat brushes or square brushes here. So we'll use a few of these. <clears throat> and then we're going to use our standard round brushes too. We'll use a round brush. We use mostly round brushes I use. But this painting will do some more square brush or flat brush. And we always use our needlepoint brush for our fine lines and things like that which is uh, important and I think we should be good and uh, maybe a smaller brush for smaller details I'll use sometimes like a number four or a number six uh, and these are all round brushes here these two are round brushes so that's a number six and a number four round brush and then we have a needlepoint brush this is a number ten ten number ten needlepoint brush and these are two flat brushes or square brushes and this one is a thirty uh, millimeter 30 millimeter, which is about an uh, inch and a quarter, approximately. And this one here is maybe like a quarter, quarter inch, or not, maybe three eighths of an inch. And this is a, a recab, number 12 recab, Kalinsky uh, natural hair square brush. And this is a synthetic, this is a Da Vinci uh, synthetic flat brush or square brush. So these are the brushes we're using, just so we have a, an idea of what we're going to use. And maybe I have another smaller square brush here and there. Maybe this one too, a Princeton. This is a Princeton Neptune quarter inch square brush. So maybe we'll use this too if we need to. So I have a couple extra square brushes on hand. I have a few more. These are some smaller ones. This is a really super small one here. This is another Princeton. Princeton makes really great brushes. So I have three Princeton brushes here that are 
in the more smaller sizes and then you saw the other ones here so just I want to cover my brushes a little bit and again if you want to see more details about my brushes you can always type in Chris Petri and you type in brushes and you, into YouTube you'll see my whole array of brushes well oh, I forgot to mention we're also going to use a hockey brush we're going to use this one too for our grasses in the foreground and that's the hockey brush medium size I got this one from Joe's art stuff really good prices on Joe's art stuff um, so I get a lot of my brushes from Joe's art stuff especially my hockey brushes I have three or four sizes they make them really wide so if you want to do a really large painting you can use a really wide hockey brush this is a medium size and they have even a smaller size so we'll use this hockey brush too alright so let's get started first thing we're going to do fresh clean water so I'm going to empty out my water bucket and I'm going to fill my bucket here with more fresh clean water so we always want to have fresh clean water here especially with our initial washes in the sky we want to keep those the water clean and so we have that I'll use my square brush here my uh, Da Vinci square brush so we use this we're going to wet the paper so we're doing the glazing technique again um, if you're just tuning in we're using the glazing technique earlier in the video we talked about using different methods and techniques with watercolor you have basically two probably like two two main ideas of thought when you're painting watercolors one is the glazing technique where you're going with light glazes first uh, and letting them dry so the light glazes first would be the light washes the really really light washes first then as you go over let it dry go over the top of it with a little darker washes and then maybe on your third or fourth time you're going with your darkest darks that's the glazing technique sort of in a real nutshell kind of basics or you can paint a la prima which is basically you go in and you do your darks first and you just work from there and you kind of work through your painting all at one time and you're not really doing glazings and letting it dry and so forth you're just working it all at the same time so I use mostly a combination of the two but I would say more I use the a la prima method but I do like the glazing technique too as well and I use that quite often so glazing technique let's start it out let's get some beautiful wet paper here let's slosh on that water see how I'm just getting the water on there fresh clean water let it flow across the painting I'm gonna put a very light coat of water on the bottom here so I'll just kinda wisp wisp that nice water color the water actually the water not the colors yet so we're doing some nice light dampening of the paper down here okay light dampening of the paper down here we sloshed on some more water up here I'm splashing some on there too I'm throwing it on there have some fun with this fire it in fire in that water there you go you're gonna win the battle with watercolors all right there you go then you can grab a tissue if you want if you see too many puddles you might say alright let me lift up a few puddles and you just gently dab the puddles of some of the water with a tissue and that's good now we're gonna get our colors and you're gonna be amazed at the colors we're gonna use right now we're gonna use our blues and purples and uh, some black some ivory black some we're gonna make the sky colors so let's start out we'll use kinda we'll stick up here we have some ivory black you notice I'm using a newer palette when when I use when I create paintings with larger paper and I do a larger painting I like to have a larger palette maybe like this so that's why I have this palette and this palette's really cool because you can kinda see my colors really I try to always have my colors from uh, warm to cool so you can kind of see all the warm colors on this side and as you transition across this way you're seeing the cooler colors going this way and I have this on my videos when you type in Chris Petri palette you'll see I have this palette here and I show you all the colors what the names of the colors are right now we're using ivory black and now some pines gray pines gray and ivory black and then some purple let me rinse my brush off some purple so I'm gonna kinda keep the colors 
like so. I'm going to work them all like this and just leave them sort of across from where we're working from. So this is some French Ultramarine Blue. There's some beautiful Prussian Blue. Some... We have some Cerulean Blue. Okay, I've put all my colors out. My water is starting to dry on my paper, so let me get some on there. All right, let's fire it in now. Also, let's do some um, burnt umber and burnt sienna. Let's get some warmth in the sky too. Burnt umber and burnt sienna, like that. Okay, so we're gonna use a touch of that, but mostly the blues. Okay, here we go. Wow, look at that. Just fired in there. Storm clouds, right? Black. Black stormy clouds. Have fun with this. Just get the black in there. For the storm clouds. Then over here, maybe some... Cerulean blue, lighter, go lighter over here. Rinse off the brush. That's what it is, you have to control that brush and the water in the brush. So I'm rinsing off my brush, drying off some of that water on a paper towel or uh, tissue or sponge. And then you do some light over here, some very light wash. Just feather that in like that. X strokes like so, like that. Add some more water, so I rinse off the brush, tap off just a touch of water, and add some more water on this. There we go. And that's all we have to do. Look at that. And then let's do the same thing. Take some of these colors. I want some of that warm color in the sky too, so let me take some of that. Burnt sienna, burnt umber. We want to keep our colors with lots of interest in them. So we do that. Looks like some rain clouds here maybe. Some rain clouds go straight down like that. You could take your tissue and just wipe it along here if you want. Blot some paint up if you have to. Whatever you want to do, whatever you feel. And then just some light very light touches of uh, brush strokes over here just to keep it like that and that's it don't go over it a second time get those paints in there you can add a few darks so I'll just take the rest of this and just add a little more there and then I sometimes take my tissue and blot up a little bit some cloudy kind of feel. This maybe is the rain over here, so it's kind of flowing down. Over here might be some clouds. A couple of dabs. Dab will do you, right? Okay, <laughs> we're having a great time here. Look at this. This is a fun of watercolor. You let the water and the colors do the work. Did you see me do much work here? No. Did you? No, I just wet the paper first. Heavier up in the sky area, lighter a uh, little dampness on the bottom of the painting toward the bottom where the building is in the foreground here. And then you just saw me. I took the paint out, put the paint in the palette, and just put the paint on the paper and let it do the work. It's flowing down this way, like rain clouds. Up here we did some clouds with our tissue. Like that. Give it that cloudy kind of feel. We make some clouds with our tissues. Look at that. And that's it. Now, Another break, but I'm telling you, this is so important. Once you do this, you have to walk away from it. You have to stop and leave this for at least a couple hours to dry, or if you're gonna, you can use a blow dryer too, if you want. You can use a blow dryer, but it, it, it's better if you let it dry naturally. It'll look better in the final uh, product. So I hope you're enjoying this. Come, we'll come right back, and we'll start working on the foreground, that beautiful shack here, and some trees, and 
other things we're going to do. But the main thing is you see how if you let the watercolors, the water and the paint do the work, you know, it comes out fantastic. So, you know, really it's quite simple. We damp, we put some damp water, heavier water up top, lighter water on the bottom, on the paper, and then we just got our colors out, the colors that we were going to use, and we just put it on the paper and let the paper soak in the paint and the water and let it flow, and there you have it. That first glazing is done, complete, looks beautiful, and you're going to even see it's going to look even better as it dries and the paper flattens out. Right now the paper is all buckled like this, so you don't want to work on that paper like this when it's all buckled. You might want to try that if you have really have been painting for many years, you can start delving into painting on the damp and buckled paper because that can be a good look too. You can find some really good looking washes and uh, looks with painting on the paper as it's sort of drying and damp but still buckled but it's more of a tough time if you're just starting out. So if you're new you'll let this dry completely 100% until the paper is flat and dry 100% and tight so the paper is again flat 100% tight like a drum skin on a drum and uh, if not, if you're kind of new, if you've been around a while and you're kind of a, an old pro or you're, you know, pretty good with watercolors, you know, you're getting, you know, you've, you've got a good uh, bunch of years under your belt, you can go in and start painting on this damp paper. But um, I recommend letting it dry 100% before you start going in and doing your second wash. I think you'll have better success that way. But again, if you're daring, you can do it. Okay, so you can do this. Get in there. Have a fun time with this. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and we're going to actually, we just had a break. Um, we're going to come back and start painting again. We're going to start doing our subsequent darker washes over the top of our lighter washes. I let this dry 100%. I did use a blow dryer to blow dry my paper. So you can kind of see my paper is really flat. Sometimes it's hard to see uh, on your side of things when you're watching this video. Sometimes you might be able, if you're really looking closely, you might see the buckles in the paper, I'm not sure. I think you can see it a little bit, but but really when you're actually here working on, like so at home, when you're working on your paper, always remember the way you tell your paper is dry, really like 100% is if the paper has flattened back out again to like almost completely flat. It might still have some bumps in it, very slight though. And that's how this is. So I took my blow dryer and took my time for about five minutes and just took the blow dryer and just kept going easy across the whole top of the paper back and forth for about five minutes until pretty much everything was flat again the paper so the paper's like you know 90 98 percent dry and that's what we want to have when we're going back in now to do the rest of our painting and this is just going to be so much fun we're going to have a great time here and again i'm into the story have you gotten into the story here I hope you're putting yourself into the story of this painting. You're maybe here, you're at the shore, and if you don't like the shore, you're probably not so interested in painting this so much. You know, you might be someone that grew up on the shore and you're kind of bored with that. You want to paint like mountain paintings or uh, landscape paintings with trees and mountains and things, and that's fine too. You're the artist. You decide what paintings you want to paint, but for those of you, those of you that really enjoy shore type paintings, seascapes and boats and things like that, this is your cup of tea. So let's keep going here and having a fun time at it. So we're going to start with um, creating some more washes. Let's, um, I'm going to do one thing first. I'm going to take some paper towel, damp paper towel, and I'm just going to uh, get my, pa my palette back to, uh, I'm going to clean up my palette just to, most times I find it's better to kind of keep cleaning the palette as we go versus letting too much paint build up in there. Um, so here let's start out with a clean, clean palette again. We have some of our square brushes we're going to use. We covered those in just a little while ago. We covered our brushes that we're going to use. And now here, I think what we're going to try to do is let's, let's think of it this way. Uh, sometimes paintings look really beautiful when you keep the color, uh, color harmony and color scheme very subdued for the most part in most of the painting and then add in some bright colors, some exciting colors here and there so that you have more or less a predominant color scheme going on and then maybe a couple highlights of like let's say a complementary color. So if we're doing mostly blue 
uh, blue here, blue and purple, then maybe we can put in a couple like orangey red colors here and there, sprinkled in the painting, but not too much. So let's see if we can keep to that. Um, I think we'll add some green to this too. So what I'm going to do is first off, again I always talk about color harmony, harmonizing your colors, and that's what we're going to do here. So first thing let's do is I'm going to take some Viridian Green here, Viridian Green, just a little touch of it, you can kind of see I'm just getting a little bit of Viridian Green on the palette, and some Sap Green maybe here, some Sap Green, that should be good, maybe some Olive Green, so, and I'm just going to put a little bit though, and I'm going to keep my tissues handy too, but I want to put a very super light wash of it over the top of this here in the sky and then blot it up a little bit like this. Just the ever so slight bit of green because we're going to add some green washes down below in the bottom of the painting so let's not let's not leave the green wash out of the upper portion of our sky. So I did add some green up there. So now our color scheme is looking like blues and greens, mostly, purple, and then we did put in some burnt sienna and burnt umber in there too, in the clouds, so let's continue with that uh, color scheme, and uh, let's see what we can do here. All right, now, I think I will do the, let's do the house next, what do you say? I think that's a good idea. Let's do this house next, and let's go right back in with our colors, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, so let's mix in all the colors, cerulean blue, let's do some Prussian blue, some purple, purple, let's get some blacks too, ivory black, pines, pains gray, okay, now I rinse off my brush, take off some water off the brush after I rinse it off. I want to get some darker washes here. Uh, let's do, well we have some green in there, let's do some more sap green here. Burnt umber, let's do some burnt umber and burnt sienna down this way here. Keep it, kind of keep it straight across from your, so you're just taking your colors and basically putting them down right in the palette the, where they are. You know, and you can just kind of mix them about. Okay. Okay, so I want to get some darker washes now, so let me add more. And I'm just going to go in there and... So I'm just going to take the, the darks. And just like, I'm just going to go around that tree in that one area there. You can kind of see that. I just skipped over that tree there, that tree, uh, the trunk of the tree. I just wanted to go around that one. The rest is okay. You can take your thumb and do a couple little branches like that with your fingernails. That's fine. And then here, we're going to go down this way. And you can notice my washes are... And then you can go in reverse to get some of those grasses and things. You can go in reverse with your brush. Here we'll do the same thing. I'm going to leave that there a little bit. Some branches. And you can see I really went dark here. I'm going very dark here with this shack. All with the flat brush. Just have a fun time with your flat brush. You could take your flat brush and get a nice point on it, like that. And then you can just do the the uh, window grills of the window, like that. 
flat brushes and or square brushes are really fun to use. So you can do that. You get some beautiful uh, effects. Uh, let's see for the roof. Let's use the same colors. Let's just maybe make them a touch lighter. The trim on the we'll do that later. The trim underneath the roof edge, the fascia boards. So the fascia boards underneath this roof here. So you have your roof here, the shingles or the it could be a metal roof. You know you you can design your roof the way you'd like. And then you'll have your fascia trim, which is right along here. That's right underneath the roof, the fascia trim. And so we'll we'll do that next. But I think we're good here. We have our we have a really good looking color scheme. We're sticking with the same colors. We're not deviating. We're kind of keeping with that blue, green, purple kind of look. Then. Um, Let's, and if we can stick with a square brush too, we're, we're, we're going to be happier and the look of the painting is going to be better. So we could start using a round brush right now, but I'm going to avoid using a brown brush because, a round brush because actually, can you imagine this? If you stick with the same brush for the most part throughout the whole painting, it's going to have a harmony to it as well. So the same thing with colors. Does that make sense? Um, if you if you harmonize your colors with throughout a painting, that's going to look really beautiful. It'll be very pleasant looking, your painting, as well as if you use just one brush, maybe let's say, or two brushes. Let's say we just use the square brush, and that could be smaller square brushes as well. So if we just use maybe like square brushes and our needle point brush. So if we use our square brushes and our needle point brushes, that'll be perfect. We just do, use those two style, basically just the two flat brushes or square brushes as they call them and our needlepoint brush we use those two and we're, we're set so let's do that let's keep keep to that game plan and I'll try to stick with my largest brush as I can for the most part as I go so I have to think about that I want to try to lighten up the wash just a little bit and I'm getting some different colors here greens and blues purples And let's leave the, let's, I'm going to rinse the brush off. And maybe we'll make this a lighter roof. And I'm going to make this a roof with maybe some, uh, maybe this is a tin roof, a metal roof. So I'm going to make this so that there's those fine, fine lines of a metal roof, like so. Like so. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. Now we could take some other colors, maybe just add in some, you know, kind of spruce it up a little. Let's not leave it all one tonal value. Let's keep our tonal values changing if we can. And I think that should be good there. So here you just hit and miss. A couple spots here and there. That looks pretty good. And then we have our fascia board under there. And let's make that a little more of a... Again, I'm going to stick with my brush, rinse off my brush. I'm going to try to go with a more of a wood feel. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, but still going in with my other colors. Let's see if we can get a nice wood feel for that. And I just try to get a couple of those lines going through. Like that. There we go. Just to get some lines going through. 
There we go. Looks good. Good enough. Let's keep this simple, this one. Um, okay, let's rinse our brush again. Let's set our flat brush. Let's use our, our other flat brush here. So we're going to go with a smaller f flat brush now. This is a, a half inch Blick Studio Synthetic. Blick makes some great brushes. If you haven't seen Blick brushes or tried them, they're great brushes. And let's get some darker darks. So I'm going to mix some French Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, Ultramarine Violet, Payne's Gray, Ivory Black. A little bit of, take a little bit of paint off, and let's get our chimney in here. There we go. Got our chimney in there. Let's do our antenna. We just take our brush, get a good point on it by just taking the brush with the paint. And you, can you see that? Nice. This is a synthetic round, quarter, a half inch. Synthetics are great because they don't hold too much water. Uh, if you use a natural hair brush, it's going to hold more water. Synthetics hold less water, which means you have a little more control. But I still like to tap on my, bra uh, my brush on a tissue or a paper towel or a sponge before I go in and start painting because that always is a big help. You don't want paint running everywhere. And, you know, so that's all we had to do there was just dry off that brush a little bit and then we have our antennae. And there we go. Just a couple little indications of some um, antenna there. That looks good. And as you can see, we're really coming along beautifully here. Let's keep going for the gusto. Let's start. Let's go in and do some distant mountains. So now we can take our distant mountains and make them the same color. No need to, uh, to change up the uh, color scheme. Let's just keep with the same color scheme distant mountains keep your eye on that line if you have to you break out your ruler again does that make sense break out your ruler and just say oh let me double check before I paint it because if you paint something and it's not the correct line that you're painting that can really affect it and really kind of make a really unpleasant uh, line on your painting and you are realizing uh, you you absolutely know this right when you're painting watercolors it's not too forgiving you kind of have to get it right the first time not, not perfect but so I'll just say, hey, let's make sure we double check here, okay? We yeah, that's the correct line. We can kind of see that, right? So that distant shoreline like that is the correct line. We know we're good. We just take a quick ruler and make sure we do our due diligence to... Uh... And then here, let's get in some purple, purple and green. This is a more distant shoreline, so we can keep this kind of lighter. purplish green here is fine and then you just leave some lights in there right leave some light lines that always looks good it's almost mysterious looking like there's some water there's some water here and there in between the mountain ranges between these low-lying mountain ranges you can maybe see a little bit of water that always looks beautiful and uh, I think we've, you know, we've done a really good job here so far. And then we add in a little bit of the brownish, reddish colors just to get that in there. We're doing the same color schemes here and there. Perfect. Look at that. 
Okay, so again, with the same color schemes, we're not going with any wild looking colors. Sticking with the same colors, we leave them all out onto the palette and then we work from that. So here we are, we're working from our palette colors. And I think we're really looking good here. We can keep working actually. Probably good, let's take a break. Uh, I can keep working and if you like to keep working, you just keep going for the gusto here. Um, pretend we didn't take a break and just keep going. Uh, I'm going to take a quick five minute break and just uh, grab another cup of coffee and uh, I'll be right back. And again, um, if you haven't subscribed, hey, we're having fun like this every week. We're doing all new paintings, landscapes, seascapes, boat paintings, we're doing figure painting, cityscapes, we're doing still life paintings, flowers, we're doing it all. Everything watercolor, so come on. Stick with us every week. Here we go. Week after week, month after month, your paintings are going to get so much better. Just follow along with us. Even if you don't like the painting, just watch us paint it. In this way, you can kind of learn the techniques as we go. Because it's, again, the same techniques, the same methods, just the different subject matter. So whatever subject matter you like, those might be the ones you're going to paint. But if you're not maybe so happy or keen on doing some seascapes, no big deal. Watch the techniques, the colors, what we're doing. You can use this same color scheme, let's say, uh, a tidbit of information, yeah. You can use this same color scheme in a different painting. You might use this in a cityscape, maybe a nice cool rainy day and in the city, and you make some buildings uh, in the city using this color scheme, as we're using here. So always remember, you can interchange all of your techniques and your methods and your colors and your techniques around the same process. It's just your subject matter might change, but you can still use your different color combinations, your different techniques as you go with whatever you like to paint. All right, we'll be right back. Chris here. Oh, we're going to have a great time. Watch this. Watch this. I just thought of this when I took a break and I was coming back and looking at the painting. I thought, what an incredible, fun little bit of information we can add to this painting that's going to make it so really interesting. Watch this. Let's get our square brush. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this distant mountain, this distant mountain range here, that's a cross. You can imagine that's a cross from this water here, that light. We're going to leave this bright white, that's the water. This could be like a bay or an inlet, right? And then that distant mountain range, we're going to take that and put that inside this window so that you're going to feel like you're looking through the building and th you know through the building and out into that distant hill. So the main thing we have to do is we have to make sure we get this right. We have to make sure we get this correct. So let's take our first, let's take our ruler. See, this is something when you take breaks, you can actually come back and look at things and say, how can I make this more interesting looking or, and hey, maybe we'll try this and it won't look so great, but at least we kind of game planned a little bit and made something a little more than just, you know, painting it and just going through it and saying, oh, okay, I'll just paint this. And no, we, we go in there and we take a break and then we come back and we're refreshed. And then we look and say, oh, how can I make this better? And then we say, oh, wow, look at this. Look at that. We can go here and we'll put a pencil line in there just so we get that correct. So that line there is the bottom of the shoreline, distant shoreline. Look at that. Now let's see how it works. You'll be the judge. You, you'll be the judge when you try this at home with your painting and say, oh yeah, it does look really good, or, or oh, it didn't work so good. Or you might not like it or whatever, but let's try that. See that? There we go. And then we take some of that, more of that uh, earth tones there, earth tone colors. All right, so now we have that completed. And then let's make this more darker up here, like that. And then we can take this. Maybe this is the focal point where we put some of that really cool earth tones in there and we add some of that there. So maybe that's 
Let's add some darker darks though. Let's make that really dark in there. Let's go black, ivory black, Payne's gray, Payne's gray, ivory black, burnt sienna, Prussian blue. Let's get that dark in there. See if we can leave the windows like that. See that? Look at that. Now the key is maybe I'll take my, um, I could scratch this out a little bit with a, um, like that. There we go. Then we can go back again and get our flat brush. Just and we can touch that up and make that just look a little bit. Look at that. Wow. That looks kind of cool. That looks like you can see through the building a little bit. There we go. And that's all. There we go. And then we can add a little bit of Prussian blue, make some dark darks. Prussian blue, some more black, burnt umber. That looks pretty good. And then we can start doing it over here too. So now you can see I'm sort of using this brush here. It's a little smaller. There we go. Have some fun with this. See how I'm just kind of scrubbing along here? And then maybe, you know, we're going to do this uh, distant building here. So I'll take that distant building and uh, shape it a little better now. Like that. So I'm going to square that off a little bit. Then I'll do this. We'll make a little... Then we'll do a lighter, lighter super light wash for the roof. A little bit of a darker dark underneath the eave of the roof, like that. I'm just trying to get some color here. Sharpen the point of my brush like so. Like that. We can do this pole too here. Telephone pole here. We can just do that nicely. It doesn't have to be thick line. You can the line can be broken up and kind of like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have an issue where some of your washes are running together, you can blot up. And we'll go back in and we'll touch that up later. You can always go back in. One of those really fun tidbits to know is you can always blot up something and then go back in and add back in your darks again. Does that make sense? So if you see some things that are blending together and looking funny and sort of you're losing the uh, shape of what you're trying to paint, because a lot of times we're painting we're painting our shapes in, so we're painting our building shapes in, the rectangle of the bottom, 
and then the rectangle of the rooftop and we're trying to keep the roof light and the, the uh, bottom portion of the building darker, let's say. If you saw how I was working here and all of a sudden when I did the darker bottom and it started to bleed and cauliflower up into the roof area, not a problem. That's the problem of when you're glazing, when you're glazing with your paints, you might want to do your light wash first, let that dry a lot, and then go back in and do your dark underside. So I tried doing the dark and the light at the same time and they started to blend together. And when that happens, all you do is you just blot up, let that dry, and then we'll go back in and, and do a darker underside of the building. So we can keep that really sharp, nice looking rectangle of the rooftop on this building. And I'll explain that later when we go back in and touch up this building over here. But it worked good over here. We kind of, since this is a little larger, we have more control over this. When we're starting to do smaller buildings like this in the distance, they get a little more, you know, iffy. So, but we'll cover that as we go and finish up the painting. But for the most part, we're looking really good here. I think we're really, um, I would say let's do the foreground and, and then we'll do the trees and then the final, we'll do some more telephone poles and trees once we do the foreground here. So let's do the foreground. I'm going to use the hockey brush. Now that's the only other different brush we're going to use. So let's get the hockey brush. I'll wet that with some water. Take some water off with the uh, tissue. Then we're going to take the take the uh, the hairs and splay them out like so. So we always do this with our hockey brushes when we're making grasses and things like that. And there you go. Then you go in and get your favorite colors. Sap green. Burn umber. Burn sienna. Careful not to get too much paint. That's the key here. Some Prussian blue. Some cobalt blue. Some French ultramarine blue. We'll even get some ivory black and Payne's gray too. There we go. Okay, I'll touch the touch the hockey brush into some uh, touch of water, not too much, and then I just try to get a little bit of everything mixed up in here, like that, and then I kind of get the brush to look like this, and then we just kind of do some of this. Not we we need more water, so we pick up a little bit of water in the water bucket, and we get a little more water in there, and then we add a little more paint. We do the same thing, burn umber, burn sienna, uh, some sap green, cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, black, ivory black, Payne's gray, purple. We get a mix of all the colors we've been using. We get that, and there we go. And then we kind of try to maybe dry off the brush a little bit like so, and then get that splay that out again. Let's see how we get with this here. Much better. Okay, we can kind of see that's looking really good. We have a little bit of a very green look. Let's get some of that brown earthy color in there. Burnt sienna, burnt umber. There we go. See? Change the colors. Don't use all one color. Always mix your colors. Nice. There we go. Look at that. And then maybe we'll do a let's do a let's do a, a darker tree. Go into the more of the blues, the blacks, the purple. A little bit of the, the darks. Get the real good darks going here. A lot of the blue. Sap green too. Plenty of French ultramarine. There we go. We want a really super dark here. Okay, now let's get our our hockey brush again. Let's just have some fun. Let's do. Like that. Look at that. Wow. That was a little daring. I went, I went, I really went for it there. <laughs> I went for the gusto there. You know? You gotta fire it in when you're doing stuff like this. You can't just. 
you know, you got to fire some stuff in once in a while. Have a fun time. I'm, I did some fun stuff here. This was really going for it. I was really, you know, that's dangerous. I, I did a lot of work. We did a lot of work on this, didn't we? All this building over here. But I saved some of it. You can see through the book. That's the thing. You have to leave a lot of air space, a lot of air in here. So when you're doing, when you're doing like um, trees and things, you want to leave a lot of light in there in between the branches and the in the brush. And then we're gonna do a gorgeous job here now. Uh, let's do a couple more of these. See, like that. So I'm just doing a couple more. There we go. And so off the brush. Dry off the brush a little bit. And we get some of these warmer colors. There we go. Okay, now we're going to start going in and using our needlepoint brush. Prussian blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber. We're getting a nice dark earthy color. And that's where we just start putting in, holding the brush really high up on the brush so you can kind of see I'm holding the brush high up here. Then I'm going way up like this, and then just kind of straight. And then you just have to move a little bit, and the brush does all the work. And if you just get some of those lines in there, that tells the whole story of the branches and the things like that and same thing here and the key is not to do too many good enough there and then here the same thing There we go, look at how fun that is. And you can kind of do some interesting shapes here and there. Like that. More paint. Then you can do some more, fill in some more of these here. Some just some quick wispy grass shapes and things, some twigs. Then we can do this here. Like that. Give it a little more uh, thicker uh, appearance. I think that looks good. Okay, now Let's keep going. Let's get our telephone uh, lines in here. Okay, you know what? Let's come right back. Let's take a quick break and then we'll, we'll come right back. Okay, we took another break, everybody. Hey, thanks so much for coming by. Again, uh, if you're here and you're just uh, starting out as a new watercolor artist, I really uh, salute you and I, I'm so happy that you're getting into watercolor here at this channel. Again, I we just came back from a break, so I, it's a good time just to chat a little bit, maybe talk about if you're a watercolor artist, you're just starting out, perfect channel, you can come by each week here. You'll see all the same techniques and methods as we go. 
And then also too, if you're an old pro and you've been painting a long time, hey, you have some fun time here. We can, you can try out these new ideas here. This is pretty much paintings that I'm creating from scratch. Um, I might use ideas from other artists here and there, and of course, but uh, I draw from a lot of different artists to try to get my ideas. But at the mo you know, for most of the most part, I try to, you know, put my own spin on things. Uh, uh, so, and the main thing is I'm trying to, you know, basically um, uh, get everybody, you know, get everybody kind of seeing the techniques and the methods that I'm using over and over again. So it doesn't matter what I'm painting. I could be painting this shore scene. I could be painting flowers. I could be painting a figure or a landscape painting with trees, whatever it is. Um, you know, if you're just following along with the same methods and techniques I use with my same palette of colors, you're really kind of set. You'll just get used to the colors, you'll get used to the methods, the techniques, how I use my brush, my colors, my water, um, and you'll, you'll just automatically uh, be kind of going in the same direction that we're all doing on this channel. So if you're following along with this channel, you can hit that subscribe button below on the right hand side, that red button there, right over there on the bottom right hand side, hit that subscribe button. This way you can follow along every week and you just keep going, you keep learning, keep trying new things. If something like this is too much for you, try a small piece of the painting. Maybe just, you know, crop it down. A lot of times I tell students to uh, crop things down if you can. I use, sometimes I use these. These are just two L's. So I have two, two L-shaped pieces of paper, watercolor paper, and you can drop them down on a painting and you can make a smaller painting. So you can do that. You can make this a smaller painting like so. So you can paint smaller parts. You could maybe just paint the paint this shack like this, like that. So, uh, you know, I always say, if you if you are kind of new to watercolor, it is a really it can be very helpful to kind of shrink down what you're doing. Maybe like if you're going to paint this scene, you know, you maybe you can paint the shack one time like so. Then you maybe can paint this here, the tree, the distant hills, and the small shack here in the distance. And if you practice those two parts, then you can take the whole and make a larger painting. So there you have it. You've practiced two sides to the painting, the, the distant kind of more smaller parts, the distant areas, and then you paint the larger shack area. And there you have it. You've practiced both sides first, then you put it together and you make the larger painting. So that's always a good way also to a good technique, if, if you will. That's just a little tidbit of information. If you, you know, if you find that you want to sort of, you know, if you're newer to watercolor and you want to maybe too much information on one painting gets gets to you and it's harder to accomplish a painting if you try smaller parts first you you'll, you might have an easier time of it i hope you'll try that method if you do seem to be having issues sometimes with too much information in one uh, painting so that's a good way and uh, we'll continue on here so we're going to go with um again the same colors burnt sienna burnt umber purple prussian blue cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, so we're getting a mixture of colors. And now we're going to do, um, we're going to stick with our game plan of drying off our brush a little bit. We don't want to put too much paint on the paper, rather go with less paint at first. So here, we're going to do the telephone pole here. This one goes right up through the painting, all the way to the top and out of the picture. Can you see that? And you can also use the tissue and lift up a couple spots. Like that. Make it dark and light, dark and light as you go up. There you go. Perfect. Now we're going to do this telephone pole next. Let's rinse off the brush, dry off the paint. We'll make this one a little bit lighter. Dry off some of that water and paint, So, because we, we don't want to go too much. There we go.
And there's something about using, again, the square brush the whole way through. If you can use this, these few flat brushes and square brushes your whole way through your painting, the painting is going to look more uh, cohesive and unified. So let's try to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go in here with this smaller brush because I have to do this smaller section up here like that. Like that. There we go. A couple little dots there on the top. Some isolators up there. A couple cross members. And we'll just do a couple little small uh, climbing uh, pegs. And the verticals look really good in this painting. So you can imagine we have a lot of verticals here. One, two, three. This tree is four, five, five here with the edge of the house, six with this tree, seven with the chimney. 8 with the antenna, 9 with this tree over here, we'll add a little more. We'll do some more work on this over here, this tree, on the right hand side, and that's looking good. And uh, look at that, we are really Coming along here, I think we're pretty much good here. We're doing a little brown for the um, for some of the trees here, the tree limbs, and okay. Now I'm going to do a little bit of splashing here kind of that sand feel, we're by the shore, so I'm going to take some sand feel with some speckles and sp splashing, and I'll use my round brush, add a little more water to that so I can get a better splashing. I'll do a couple splashes up top, then I might, I might lift a couple of those just so that they're there, but just very subtly. Again, I want to try to make sure I'm doing the same thing on the whole rectangle here. I don't want to put splashes down there in the bottom and not at least add something subtly up top. There we go. And Okay, so we have that there. Really nice look here, earthy look. Um, A little bit of uh, Viridian, that looks good too. If I'm going to add Viridian though, I want to make sure I If I add Viridian here and there, let's make sure we add it up top in the sky. So I'll just do very super light Viridian. So I'm just, you can kind of see I'm adding a little bit of Viridian in the sky. I could even go in, I'll use my larger brush. Let me, my water's getting kind of muddy there. You can kind of see that. Pretty muddy water there. Let's get some fresh water. some fresh clean water. This way I can get some of that Viridian in a little bit easier. There we go, some more Viridian. And I'm just lightly working in some of that Viridian here and there. Maybe some across here like that. That's pretty much it. I think this is good. The painting is pretty much, I think, finished here. Let's see what we can do. Let's do a little more um, 
darks with the uh, Prussian blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Just maybe a little more vertical, a couple vertical. There. Then we have a couple small br branches and and then here we said we would. Make that a little bit burn sienna, burn umber, French ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, all straight paint, no water. And we'll just kind of make that dark, dark there along this side here. Like that. Then I dry off some of that paint. And then we can kind of do this, so we get a little bit of that. We can just kind of make a little, a little you know, a little more detail on the, uh, on this shack over here. We can make it a little bit like that. That looks pretty good. If we have to, we can always blot up a little bit. Sometimes we can take a tissue and just kind of shape it. Make a make a nice nice point on the uh, tissue and just press down on it like that. There we go. So sometimes you can lift some paint real strategically with the tissue by just molding it a little bit. It might have to be a little damp. You might have to dampen the tissue a little tiny bit, but it's got to be sort of dry anyway to get the uh, paint to lift off well. And uh, I think this is. I probably can do a little better over here. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, sap green. Just some more kind of leafy type things here. I, I think I kind of, some of these shapes over here might not be the greatest. Let's take a look at that. See if we can get a better, some better shapes here like that. So I'll just use this. There we go. And again, we don't want to overwork too much, but you know. I think that looks fine. That looks fine. Let's call this complete. Again, if you had to come back in and do a couple extra little spots of color if you want, you could do that. Um, I think this is pretty good. Maybe we could add a boat, maybe a distant boat here. So here would be, uh, this would be a good spot here for a boat. Like that there. And then we just have a, a mast there like that. Just an indication of a boat, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of detail to it, just like that. And we can make a little darker darks here on the bottom of the boat.
And that might look a little And maybe we'll just add some more interesting color. Maybe we add some cadmium red a little bit here. That's where we can do that little touch of like more interesting color. To the painting that kind of really over there too, maybe a little bit of orange, cadmium orange. Prussian blue and French ultramarine blue. Good, really good dark, no paint, no water, just straight paint. And we could make this line come straight up through here, maybe a little bit like that. There we go. And again, I think the only thing we can do now is a little bit of that grayish mixture, everything together. Rinse my brush. We want this really light, just a light wash like that. We dry off a little bit on the, we dry a little bit off on the um, tissue, and then we'll just do our some of our lines here, our communication lines. We could darken it up a little bit with just burnt umber, burnt sienna. French ultramarine blue, uh, Prussian blue. Let's do that. Let's get this, these lines in. Good way to practice these lines is give them a couple practice runs first. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We want to kind of make them rounded, like so, like that. There we go. Just some interesting lines in there, and you can darken them up a little bit in a couple spots. There you go. All right, that's that's fine. We don't want to fuss around too much. We could put some figures in. Maybe we'll put some figures in here. We could put some figures in over here, maybe. Some indications of some figures here, maybe over here too as well.
sometimes you have those uh, yellow yellow raincoats on these guys wear along the shore and we'll put some more uh, dry off some of that Again, you can add some really tiny uh, figures, you know, some really small type figures here if you want in your painting. Just the lightest bit of um, color. And that's good. A couple of uh, seagulls here, maybe. There we go. And looking fine. Okay, everyone, thanks for stopping by again. I got lost in the details here. Sometimes you can do that. Have fun, get into some of the details, but keep them very minimal. Be very careful at the end of the painting to do really subtle, detailed, you know, uh, uh, um, additions to your painting. Once you're kind of, you know, 90% complete, Go real sparingly on your details. You can kind of see I just did very little things like the, the wires for the telephone lines. I did very lightly. A couple tiny figures in there, very sparingly. A couple uh, seagulls here along the shore, some shorebirds in the air here. Not too many, just a few over here. And I, I think that's really all that. And the boat, we did a little extra, did a sailboat here. So I think if you keep, if you keep to those few things and not get too... carried away with too many details you can really have a nice uh, pleasant pleasing uh, painting at the end and not getting overburdened with too many things going on in the painting to keep it somewhat simple so I thanks again so much for uh, watching please subscribe if you aren't you know thumbs up if you like the painting and if you don't like the painting thumbs down that's fine leave comments too I'm always excited to hear your comments I, I really enjoy hearing everybody's comments about the painting questions and um, also, too, just uh, again, if you're subscribing, you'll be with us here every week as we go forward. We're painting every week, new subject matter, and we keep sticking to the same mantra. The techniques and methods all stay the same. So if you're here on this channel and you're following week by week, you're going to learn the methods and the techniques that'll get your paintings looking better. You'll have a better um, time of watercolor. And um, you can do this. Um, it's just a matter of uh, sticking with it each step of the way and uh, we'll be back soon and again um, so glad you came by to paint with us and we'll see you in the very next video bye bye